Hello folks, so this video is to accompany lab number seven, all about confidence intervals. And this particular short video is going to help us distinguish between certain functions associated with the T distribution. Functions in particular are going to be PT and QT. We have seen the prefix P and Q in previous labs, such as P norm, Q norm, P binome, etc. So those generally play the same role, except now we are applying those roles to the T distribution. So I have a couple notes here um, that are specified in the lab instructions, but bear repeating. So the PT function is what you're going to use if you want to find a probability. Now recall, R is generally considered about areas to the left, probabilities to the left, um, so we need to keep that in mind. So for instance, suppose we wanted to find the probability in the T distribution such that um, the probability we desire is, well, I want to do an easy one first, to the left of zero. Now I do need to specify a degrees of freedom. Uh, for the moment, I'm just going to pick uh, 11 degrees of freedom. Recall for any of these normal distributions, zero is the value in the center. It's the halfway mark, the median as well. So my answer here should be a 0.5. Delightful. Well, that's an easy one. <laughs> so now if I did PT, maybe say with um, an input of two, that is going to be two standard deviations to the right with 11 degrees of freedom. Again, I'm just using 11 for no particular reason. This should be a fairly large probability, probably up in the 90% or so. Yes. So um, what if we wanted, so I'm going to actually put some code here, a note. This would be the probability that the T distribution with 11 degrees of freedom to the left of 2, this probability is 0.964598. That's how we would write that in our full probability notation. Now what if we wanted the area not to the left, but to the right of the t value of 2? Remember that the entire area under these probability density functions is 1. So if I wanted the area to the right, I'm not going to use the same input. I'm going to take the complement. And this is going to be about 0.035. I wanted to use the full probability notation to write this out. Like earlier, I'm going to be a little lazy here, but I'm going to put a greater than sign. And now this is 0 0.03540198. So that is the PT function. Let's look at the QT function now. The QT and PT are inverses of each other. One of them, PT, you find a probability based on a T value. The QT function, it's inverse, it's the inverse. So you're going to input a probability and the output will be the T value. Let's take a look. I'm going to use an example that is shown on the screen. So for instance, whoops, if we were to input a probability of 0.964598, I am looking at this probability here, area to the left, in the t-distribution with 11 degrees of freedom, I have just input a probability. My output, when I click enter, is going to be the corresponding t-value with 0.964598 to its left. 
already know that t-value because we're uh, this is kind of a fun example here my answer better be a two so left-handed probabilities are what R always considers. So what if we typed QT with a 0.5? And now I can use any degrees of freedom here, um, but I'll stick with 11. Can you guess what the corresponding T value would be such that area 0.5 is to its left? 25 halfway mark is going to correspond to a t value of zero. Now, generally, we are going to use the QT function um, in the context of confidence intervals in the near future with hypothesis testing. We generally consider right tailed areas. So, uh, just a moment ago, this 0.96 that I entered into the QT function, that was the area to the left of the T value of two. Now, what if I was given or I wanted to consider an area in the right tail? For instance, I'm gonna input this wrong at first. What if I wanted 0.05 in the right tail? Of the t distribution with 11 degrees of freedom, and I want to find the corresponding t value. Well, if we want, if we want 0.05 in the right, I'm gonna highlight that right tail. I shouldn't just type 0.05 into the input of this function. I should type its complement. Imagine that t distribution with 0 0.05, a fairly small region in the right tail. Well, what is the area to the left? Complement. To make that easy, I want to do 1 minus 0 0.05. 0 .05. Usually, right tailed areas are going to, well, small right tailed areas are going to correspond to positive values. If you had input all these same things but had not done the 1 minus, so your input was 0.05 instead of 0.95, you're going to get the negative 1.795 there because of symmetry with these normal distributions. A question that you're going to run upon often is finding the like t critical value that corresponds to a particular confidence level. Um, to change things up, I'm going to say that corresponds to 90% confidence, and maybe let's say. 25 degrees of freedom. So let's find this. Let's find this. Find the t critical value. Okay. So recall that 90% is the area in the center of this t distribution. Area, aka probability. So we already know probability. That means we want to find the t critical value not probability, we're going to need to use the QT function. Now, 25 degrees of freedom was given, so I'm just going to indicate that. If 90% confidence is specified, that is the area in the middle. So what would be the area in the tails with 90% confidence. Well, that would correspond to 0.10 in the tails. But that needs to be split into the two tails. 
So we would say that this is alpha over two is 0.05. I guess I should have said that alpha is 0.10. Okay, so this corresponds identically with what I was working with earlier in terms of area. The T critical value that corresponds to 90% confidence, 25 degrees of freedom, the area in the upper right tail is going to be 0.05. But that is not what I'm going to type here into the QT function. I'm going to type, well, I suppose I'll type 0.05, but I'm gonna do one minus. That would be our t critical value. Let's go validate that with the t table. So I'm going to pop open the t table now, and we're going to look at 90% confidence, or 0.05 in the upper tail, with 25 degrees of freedom. Okay, so 25 degrees of freedom, scroll down, scroll down. Upper tail probability, 0.05. And you will see that that matches the value that we had from our QT function in R.